Foster. I'm joined by Austin Lyons, Senior Analyst, Creative Strategies. Austin, always appreciate when we get to chat with you and uh, our wide-ranging conversations. So Alphabet joined the $3 trillion and beyond club this week. Uh, what's your take on that first? I mean, I'm not surprised who doesn't use Google, right? They've got a tried and true revenue model, adver online advertising. They've got several apps with billions of daily users. Of course, we're in this new AI era, so they have to figure out how to infuse their products with AI and make money from it. But they seem to be doing that uh, from their last earnings call. Revenues are up. They're making more money selling better ads. So it really isn't surprising. Austin, one of the things you flag is um, Google Gemini leapfrogging Chat GPT as the top app in the App Store. I missed that one. Uh, so let's talk about that milestone. How do you interpret that? Yeah, totally. Great question. So obviously, um, Chat GPT was early to the game, open AI, and, and they really revolutionized you know, bringing AI to consumer products. Um, but guess what? Google's here. They've been working on it. They have sort of a full stack team from hardware to software research. And, and basically, they're showing that maybe, obviously, brand matters, and a lot of people have ChatGPT installed, but there can be more than one player here. Um, they made a really cool feature that is sort of in the limelight right now. It's their image model they call Nano Banana, and it, it's super useful. You could take a picture. I took a picture of myself this morning, and I said, put me in a different color shirt. And it kept everything except changed the color of my shirt. And, and so it's, maybe it's a fun parlor trick right now. Um, that's why everyone, maybe that's why everyone's downloading it. On the other hand, I can imagine how useful that will be. I mean, imagine I'm watching YouTube and instead of seeing advertisements for men's dress shirts, I see me wearing that dress shirt, right? Like all sorts of opportunities that you can imagine for Google. And them passing ChatGPT just goes to show that, that Google is serious and that consumers are appreciating what they're building. I have mixed feelings about them, you know, like if they take your image and then use it in some other way. Um, but at the same time, the point you made about the image editing, that stands out to me because one of the things that I feel like, I, you know, ChatGPT is good for a lot of, it has a lot of good use cases, right? Um, but images I find that it struggles with because like I've put an image of like my son and I'm like, turn this into a birthday flyer and, and make it whatever. And it just doesn't all always do so well and I feel like artists still have that or you know say Adobe has that so you feel like there is an edge from what you saw in the performance of Google and the nano banana yeah, definitely and you have to ask yourself why was Google's image model so great well it's because Google has access not only to the world's best researchers but to the world's best data set right Google image search I use Google photos they have all sorts of photos of me um, and and yes so they have everything it takes to make those experiences that, that you're desiring. I mean, yes, you can imagine how this will just transform everything that we're trying to do, anything visual, being able to use AI to spruce it up, to make the flyer for your son's birthday party or, or whatever. Um, I think Google is there and they have the incentive and they have the data and the team to do it. And you say that Google has the revenue model necessary for worldwide AI adoption. Um, it, what do you mean by that? And, you know, how far do you see its tentacles going? That's a great question. So you have to ask, what is the business model for bringing AI to people? If you want the biggest, broadest reach, what consumers expect is free. I mean, that's what we're used to in the social media age. Of course, on the flip side, you have to monetize that somehow. And the way that it's monetized is advertising, which is tried and true and well known for Google. Um, OpenAI and ChatGPT, obviously, they have paid subscriptions and that totally works. People will pay for it, but it does limit the reach you can have. Not everyone on um, 7 billion people on the planet are going to be willing to pay. On the flip side, there are companies that are probably willing to pay to advertise to all 7 billion people on the planet. So advertising is a great business model to bring a technology like this to the masses. And it's something that Google's been doing for decades. So it, it won't be hard. They've got the distribution. They've got everything built up for selling ads, you know, to, to bring ads into their Gemini experience or to bring AI into the places where they're already advertising, like YouTube, like I mentioned.
So Alphabet Google also had announced this week an investment they were making in the UK as it relates to AI. Do you think part of that is also, you know, kind of creating friendly relations, especially as it come, pertains to regulators and the regulatory landscape there? Because, you know, tech is often, big tech is often under a microscope in the UK. Definitely, you know, Regulations is surely something that they're always having to think about. How do we stay on the right side of favor with the governments around the world? Um, I also do just think, you know, surely there are teams within Google that are focused on certain countries, certain regions, and they're just trying to say, how do we create the best experiences for the people who live in, you know, Europe, for example? Um, so there's, there's, I'm sure there's lots of reasons behind from both business and product, but also currying regulation favor is never a bad secondary reason to do things. All right. Uh, Austin, any final thoughts you want to leave us with as it relates to how you are analyzing Alphabet Google? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I'd always be thinking long term and thinking about the business model. Um, and I would say that Google historically hasn't really been a product company. They like to invent lots of things. They actually invented the transformer architecture behind today's AI, but they weren't the ones to bring it to market. And yet in the last six months, there does seem to be somewhat of a culture shift of actually being able to bring, build products and bring them to market very quickly um, in ways that customers love. So that's what I'd just be watching is really that product cadence and that cultural sentiment coming from Google to say, can they keep up? Can they innovate? Or can they stay at the forefront of AI? Well, you know, what's interesting is Alphabet Google has now caught up to Meta in terms of the leadership within the MAG7 uh, running neck and neck in terms of year to date performance. So some great insight there, Austin. That's Austin Lyons, Senior Analyst, Creative Strategies. Thank you. Have a great weekend, Austin.